Yo, once again it's on. Back at you one more again, Real Ken's TV in the house like kitchen sinks. Hopefully you like the video. Feel free to comment. Definitely share. Subscribe to the Chiz channel if you're not already subscribed. And be sure to hit that post notification. So anytime I bring you this action and this heat, guess what? You're amongst the first to receive. Now with no further ado, let's get into uh, this evening's video, if you will. You know, I have people that ask me all type of questions, and something that I wanted to address was uh, prison food, jail food, how they feed you. Well, if you paid any attention to the thumbnail that I posted, that tray right there that you seen, as you clicked on this video, that's exactly what trays look like. Whether it's in prison, whether it's in uh, the county jail. Now, I will say that that tray right there is more, uh, it looks like more of a, a tray that they would serve you in the county jail. Because in certain prisons, they're not going for that and they're going to riot. Now, y'all going to feed us. Maybe nasty, but you're gonna give us a decent a decent portion. So that tray right there resembles a tray in the county jail. Now, a lot of people, you know, they feel as though, well, uh, you know, you did something to break the law, so why should you eat well when you're in prison? Now I understand that to a certain extent. I do. Because when you go to prison, it's not supposed to be a reward. You know, it's not supposed to, it's not a, a pat on the back. Good job. Well done. You're supposed to have it hard in prison. You're supposed to, it's not supposed to be smooth selling. After all, if it was, what would you learn? However, when you're in prison, they have you do a lot of things and save the facility and the state a lot of money. So instead of hiring a outside plumber to come in guess what you're gonna have some inmates that know a thing or two about plumbing instead of having uh, a diesel mechanic come in and charge you sixty dollars an hour guess what you're gonna have an inmate that knows a thing or two about diesel you know engines and things of that nature you see what i'm saying uh landscaping they're not bringing no outside companies in now nah, the, the inmates is gonna do it the cooks, you bring a couple people in from the kitchen, but the inmates is primarily responsible for the meals. Inmates, laundry, um, just anything that you can possibly imagine, commissary, the inmates is, is doing it. And guess what you make? I'm in Kentucky. Guess what the inmates make in Kentucky? If you're in an actual prison, you get about 25, 26 bucks a month. Now, if you have what's called a special, uh, they have like special jobs, you know, and these guys, they, um, they, they really, you know, do some things for the prison or what have you. So they may make, you know, a hundred dollars a month, 130. But for the most part, you're going to make 25, maybe 30 bucks a month. You go to work five days a week, you work eight hours, unless, you know, sometimes you get a cool job and you only stay a couple hours and they let you leave. But whatever the case may be, 25, 30 bucks a month, not a lot of money. Not in my book. And I would assume that it's not a lot of money in your book. And so when you're doing all of these things, in my opinion, the least they can do is feed you well. They feed you like crap. So when your people are calling you and asking you to send them money and telling you just how bad prison is, again, I understand that it's not supposed to be good. I get that. But visualize this tray that I posted on my thumbnail because that's what a tray will look like and does look like in jail, prison, either or. 
remember a particular time I was at a, uh, it was like a low level, uh, minimum security prison. And they would send us out every morning, uh, five days a week. They would send us out first thing in the morning, 630 in the morning, they come and get us. And we're out, you know, we're cutting grass and we're weed eating. And, you know, like as you're traveling on the highway, you see those big steep uh, look like mountains, but they're really just like they're just hills, if you will. Well, there's grass that grows down alongside of those those steep hills or what have you. So they would have us go out there and, and mow the top part, like the flat part. But then we have to go like on the sides and, and weed eat. And that was our job. And I remember this one particular morning, they sent us out and I had the lawnmower and I was, I was moving slowly. I must admit, I was moving very, very, you know, I wasn't moving that slow, but I wasn't going at the pace that, uh, the boss, the boss, I don't ever call him my boss, but that's what my boss said. I don't call him my boss, the guy. That's where I refer to him as the guy. He felt as though I should have been moving faster. So when he came up to me and he was like, man, what's the problem, man? You know, is everything okay? I'm like, man, everything's cool. I said, but man, just to be honest, man, I don't really have a whole lot of injury. I'm starving. I haven't really eaten anything. Now that particular morning before, I never will forget this, that particular morning when they sent us out to work, they literally served us a boiled egg, a biscuit, and they ran out of ham. It was supposed to be, you know, ham was actually supposed to go on the biscuit. They ran out. So we had a boiled egg and a biscuit. And they tell you, take that, eat your food, go on out there and work. I ain't never been no yard boy. Oh, yard boy. I ain't never been that. That's why a lot of times when I've been in prison, I probably caused myself more. I, matter of fact, I know I should have been home. They get in trouble. They give me an extra year. They get in trouble. They give me an extra nine months. They get right up. So I'm rebellious, talking crazy to the staff. I'm throwing my trays. Now, I'm not bragging because none of this was uh, cute, you know, but just at that time, I was just like, man, I ain't having it. Y'all got us out here doing all of this. The least that you all could do is feed us. Then you send us out for lunch with a bag lunch, with an apple, a cookie, a bologna sandwich, no cheese or anything, a bologna sandwich or a peanut butter sandwich. And they give us like these little packs. And with the packs, you open the packs up, you pour it in your, you know, you find something to drink out of or whatever, and it turns into... Uh, some sort of juice. That's what we would have for lunch. And they would send it out with us. And this particular day, man, I just didn't have that much energy. Like, I literally didn't. And he comes and snatches the lawnmower, and I got it. And they do me a favor, they fire me. <laughs> as though I'm going to be insulted, as though I'm going to be upset. Good, I ain't want to work out here anyway. So at that point, they took me back to the uh, to the jail, and they locked me down. Now, when they locked me down, they didn't lock me down like in the hole. I've been to the hole a time or two. But they didn't lock me in the hole, but what they did was they put me, it was kind of like a restricted dorm for the people that didn't have jobs. So I never will forget John. He was the coordinator at this particular, because I wasn't actually at a prison. It was more of a jail. See, in Kentucky, they have Class D facilities. A Class D facility means it's for low-level offenders, and they send you out into the community and work. But as I mentioned, you'll make $26 an hour. And at this particular facility, you didn't make $26, I said, an hour. So let me rewind. $26 per month. Now, at this particular facility, you didn't make $26 a month. You made $12.60 per month. That's what you made. Working five days a week, eight hours a day. Out there in the blistering 85, 90 degree sun. So, they put me in a dorm. And after about 
I don't know, a month or so. Everybody else is begging to get out of there. Oh, please, Mr. John, let me get a job. Please let me go out and work. Not the real Ken's. <laughs> I wasn't hearing it. He used to come out there and be like, uh, look, man, I'm going you know, to get you out and work, man. Why don't you get out of this dorm, get you some fresh air, get you. I say, look, John, I ain't calling Mr. John. John, I don't want to be here, man. I don't even want to be. I don't even know why I'm at this facility. It was really, really racist. Really, really racist, man. It was terrible. I said, I don't want to be here, man. Respectfully. Could you get me somewhere closer to home? Man? I don't know why they sent me here anyway. That particular place was more so uh, of a place to where they sent you if you had, you know, disciplinary actions or write-ups and things like that. I don't even know why I was there. And so for about two months straight, I refused to work. I caught write-ups. They put it in my file. Wasn't going to do it. They would send you out in the wintertime. You weren't allowed to wear thermals. There was something about security reasons. You couldn't wear a thermal. So they would give you these state coats. Google a prison state coat. A lot of times they're the uh, khaki colored uh, coats. Really, really thin. Sometimes they're blue. And they would send you out with that. You could wear a toboggan. You could wear gloves. But you couldn't wear uh, thermals. I never understood that think I'm going out in the winter time 15 20 degrees a lot of times colder than that just to work you see a lot of them that guys they wanted to go out and work because they would have their peoples drop off cigarettes and they would bring the cigarettes back in well how do you bring cigarettes back in they keistering them I'm not keistering anything never have never will man you can make a lot of money all you gotta do man listen I'm not keistering nothing so that's why a lot of those guys preferred to go out and work. I wasn't trying to hear it. Look at how they treating us. Look at how they feeding us. You all doing a whole lot of tap dancing. That's what I call it, tap dancing. You wouldn't work on the street. But now you want to come in here and work and, and, and show that you a, you's a good inmate. You's a good inmate. Man. Not me. Not I. So eventually, you know, after a few months, he seen that I just wasn't going to work. They sent me somewhere else, sent me to a, a much better place. But it ended up costing me, you know, they put it in my file and said that, you know, real Ken's, you know, he refuses to work or whatever. And when I thought I was going to go home, they gave me an extra 12 months. But hey, you have to stand for something. man. Now, I'm not saying that that's the best thing. Uh, the best advice to give someone, <laughs> you know, is just, I guess it just depends on you and who you are. I wasn't hearing it. Go out there and do your own weed eating. Go out there and pick up your own roadside, you know, like when animals and, and you know, deer and things like that get hit. You, They want us to go out there and pick the, you know, pick that up. Put it on the back of the truck and clean it up. Man, I'm not with none of that go to the dog pound and, and take care of the dogs and now you have a lot of animal lovers that would do those things and I don't have a problem with it you know it just wasn't me I wasn't doing it picking up cans alongside of the road and no so negative now if I'm at a facility and you all gonna feed us well cool but we gotta come back and eat this crap this slop no because everybody doesn't have money for commissary now Fortunately, fortunately for me, I had money, some money coming in. It's not like I was in there balling out of control, but I had, you know, I was fortunate enough to have some, you know, money coming in, but then they get mad, man. The woman that ran the commissary, she gets mad. Commissary shut down for the rest of the day. She was like the lieutenant's uh, wife. So basically whatever she said went, she get mad. She's having a bad day. Commissary shut down. So you might not even get your commissary. You got to wait a, a whole week. So you got to eat what they serve. And it's awful. That tray right there is, is should be outlawed. You shouldn't have to eat that crap. So that's just an example. You know, this is not going to be a long video or anything like that. It's just an example of, of how they feed inmates. And again, I'm not saying that an inmate is supposed to be treated like royalty. But inmates do a whole lot of work and save the state 
in some cases, uh, privately ran facilities, which is a lot of those, a whole heck of a lot of money. So the least you can do is feed them. Can't really pay them what you can pay them. But at least feed them. Make sure that the inmates eat well. Make sure that when you go out to do your job in the morning, that you're full. You eat a biscuit and a, a boiled egg with some juice or some coffee. What type of meal is that to feed a grown man? And like, like I mentioned, a lot of guys, they would just go right along with it. I wasn't with it. I was rebellious. And, and I just wasn't going to do it. it. Cost me a little bit more time in my life. I'm regretful that I was even in there in the first place. A lot of times when they serve you those trays, they do that because they know, okay, this is going to drive people to the commissary even more. So now you're going to the commissary and you buying those, you know, those high priced items because you, you don't want to eat that tray. That's garbage. And you'll eat it if you don't have anything else to eat, but that's straight garbage. And then you have these C super CEOs that come through and, and they lock you, uh, well, they don't lock you down. What they do is when they're shaking you down, they'll come through, shake you down, go in your locker. And they want you to be able to account for every food item that you have. So if you have 40 noodles, ramen noodles that they sell in the stores for what? Six for a dollar, six for a dollar, 20. I don't know exactly what they are. Well, in certain places, they're 50 cents, but I've been in certain places to where they're $1.25 per pack, the ramen noodles. Yeah, it's highway robbery. So let's just say you have 40 ramen noodles in your locker. You got a couple cans of chili, a couple bags of chips, um, you know, a couple of summer sausages, paws, double paws. Um, you know, you just have, you know, Zoom Zooms, Wham Whams, your, your uh, Fago sodas. Um, what else do they sell that's popular? Your honey buns. Kit Kats, your Snickers, you know, just things of that nature, your peanut butter, your crackers. These are the things, tuna, these are the things that you're going to find in a, a inmate's locker in prison. Well, you have a CO that wants to be, uh, wants to move his way up to sergeant. He really think he a real life police. He really thinks he's a real life officer. You got a receipt for all this food. So, you, you know, you hand them your receipts or what have you, but you might have several different receipts. If you don't have a receipt accounting for every single item, he's going to take it. He's going to take the items. Let's just say you have a receipt for 34 noodles, but you have 46 noodles in your locker. He's going to take the additional, you know, 12 noodles. So you have a receipt for five tuna packs. You have eight. He's going to take the additional three tunas. He's going to take it. Then he's going to write you up, write you up. I believe the write-up is an unauthorized uh, property. I believe it's something like that. I mean, you deal with a whole lot of just hateful people in prison, in jail, period, man. A whole lot of hateful people that are able to come to work and take it out on other people simply because they know that they can. But some of them get their issue, and I'm going to have a video about that soon. I've made some videos, but I'm going to make another video because some of them guys get their issues, man. They get they, they they noodle pushed all the way backwards. You know what I mean? AKA wig split. Yeah, them COs, they think they real, real tough until somebody, you know, calls them out. But nevertheless, I just wanted to uh enlighten you all on some of the situations as far as the food in prison. So if you if you're uh associated, affiliated, what have you, with anyone that's in prison and they're telling you that they need money, don't think that it's just for drugs unless you just obviously know that that's what it is you guys in prison man you need some money in prison it's not your obligation it's not your job to do it but i'm just saying out of the kindness of your heart send them some money if, you, if you're able to from time to time i'm not saying take care of them every single week i'm just saying from time to time just understand everybody makes mistakes and this is how they feed people in prison real kens tv hopefully uh you enjoyed the video Feel free to comment, definitely share, subscribe to the Chiz channel if you're not already subscribed, and be sure to hit that post notification. So anytime I bring you this action and this heat, guess what? Amongst the first 
to receive. Now, I'm going to get back to my Dallas Cowboys game because the Cowboys are up 27-13, to 13, but I thought of the people. I'm a big Dallas Cowboy fans for you all that don't know, but I thought so much of you all to take 20 minutes out of watching the Dallas Cowboys or actually listening to them on the radio because I'm just now getting off of work and make this video. Go Dallas, man.